Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the VW Revolution Recos, which is a 2019 this one. So at the back driver's side, you've got your water intake, which opens with the chrome key. You simply, as this has got a fresh water tank on board, simply put your hose pipe in there and fill. Um, I don't, it's, it's not a very big tank, it's about 20 litres or so for the cold water fed tap in the kitchen. And then next to it, you've got your hookup blade. So this is where you hook up with mains electric. So we're always advised that you hook the van up first, then the power source, and obviously do it in reverse when unhooking. And you'd simply lift the lead up and slide it on there. And then there's a small blue clip in the left hand side, which you'd push down to unhook. Walking around the back of the vehicle, You'll notice you've got rear parking sensors, so colour-coded rear parking sensors, so you park a pilot on the VW. And then in here, you've got all your trips on mains electric and your 12 volt fuses. So it would be a good idea to carry some spares. And then as this is fitted with a solar panel, this is your solar panel regulator and there's a USB on there. So if you wanted to charge, you can charge off the solar panel. And two green lights means that the batteries are charged. Got a concertina door there so you can get access from the side as well. Get access in there. And then you've got a battery to battery charger which is just here to charge your leisure battery. LPG, so turn the toggles will release the door and you can take this off. And then this is a camping gas bottle, which is our test bottle and it's a 907. So to, if you wanted to get a gas bottle for your vehicle, you need a camping gas 907 bottle. And it's just a bottle top regulator. So you just spin the bottle to tighten it on the regulator and then use the black knob here it's got a plus and a minus on obviously minus turns it off plus turns the bottle on and it'll give you gas for your hob but always make sure that it's turned off before you do start traveling just in case anybody did go into the back of you or anything the gas is off and safe should you be involved in a collision you'll notice that your table stores away here You've got your mattress for your pop top, but you've also you've also got a little clip here for a lever. And what you can do is, if you want in loading space, you would lift this up. But if you want to use it as a parcel shelf, you just push it down. Or you can use it as a bench if you want to put your walking boots and your wellies on. If you're going on a walk, you can sit on the back of here. Or if it's just a nice day and you want to look out of the, the view, you can sit on the back bench. And then on the driver's side, just underneath the side step, in the middle of the vehicle, obviously this one's for your diesel heater and this one here is for your waste water out your sink. So what you'll need to do is put some sort of bucket or waste master under here to collect that water as you wouldn't want it draining directly onto the grass or the site that, you've, that you're on as they'll want you to put it into a special holding container and then de decant it up to the waste disposal point and dispose of it safely. And then coming round to the passenger side of the vehicle You've got your diesel. Which is here, outside the passenger door. And then because it's a new styled Euro 6 engine, it takes AdBlue, but you will get an AdBlue warning that's telling you that it's time to refill the AdBlue and you can buy it on the pump or you can buy it in the drums in the five or ten litre drums and just top it up probably takes about 15 16 litres of vw um to fill with ad blue but if you didn't fill with ad blue and it got low it would go into limp mode or if it went completely dry of ad blue it will fail to start and you will need to get uh, vw out 
to program the vehicle to start again. You can turn your passenger airbag off with the key here should you have children in the seat there, the double passenger seat. And your bonnet release is on the driver's side. So if you just pull that, we'll have a quick look underneath the bonnet. Coming around to the front. Got gas struts on it, so no need for a stay. Just pop it up. You've got obviously your weight in the back here. Yeah, so it's three, or should I say 2,800 kilograms gross vehicle weight. If you were planning to tow with this, you can tow up to a train weight, which is the obviously the VW transporter and whatever you're towing can't exceed 4.9 ton. And then you've got your front and back axle weights and your chassis number on there. You've got your power steering fluid, your brake fluid, your oil filler, and your dipstick for checking your levels. Your screen wash, which is probably the most important one that you need. And then your radiator fluid. Your batteries here, so you've got a negative and a positive should you ever need to give or receive a jump start. So this is the main 12 volt control panel of the vehicle. So obviously if you hooked up you've got mains 240 volts so your three pin plugs will work and you'll be able to plug a household item into the vehicle. If you weren't and you were just parked up at the side of a beach or while camping you would only get 12 volt so the USBs would work and all the other 12 volt lighting that's in the vehicle but you wouldn't be able to use the sockets. So you've got your on off button here which turns the master on. Then you've got your pump, so you can turn your pump on and off should you have water on board in the fresh water tank for your kitchen tap. You've got your lights, so this is your master switch for your lights, which turns the lights on. And then you've got the wardrobe light, which is just this one here. Going up and down on the arrows, So you get your leisure battery voltage, which is shown 13.8 volt at the moment, but we are hooked up. It will give a true reading when the hookup's taken out, because obviously it's receiving mains 240 volt. You've got the internal temperature of 36 degrees. And then you can go into the settings, should you need to, but I wouldn't really bother because it's nothing important in the settings apart from the display, brightness, time, and sound of the beeping. And above, you've got your diesel heater. So you can set the temperature on heating. So you've got temperature mode, power mode, heat and ventilation, thermostat. So if you go to temperature first, you can obviously turn the temperature up and down to what you want it. So for this, we'll just say max 30 degrees. It's not flickering, it's just flickering on the camera. And then you can set a timer, so off. You'll see if you, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, it goes up in five minute increments. And you can set your temperature, or you can turn it all the way to off. And that's basically how you put your diesel heater on. You need to make sure that you've got a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in the main tank for this to work effectively, because obviously the diesel heater has taken a much higher feed to the main engine just that's for if you were to get low on diesel it wouldn't drain the engine from starting 12 volt up here for more charging so you've got um four usbs in this area some shelving tables in place there so you've got a foldable leg and then if you pop these up these keep it from the table from coming off. Push them down, you'll be able to lift it up and take it off. But that just nine, basically 90 degrees clips onto the, the rail. And then if you've got the kids in the back, they can enjoy using the table when traveling. You've got your grill. And 
there's the grill lit. You may want to take these out when travelling or wrap them up in a tea towel as they can rattle with the potholes on the road. Got storage below your fridge is a 12 volt compression fridge so you just turn on and off by clicking and holding this button and then you can go obviously through the temperatures obviously the bigger the dot gets the colder the fridge gets with a small freezer box but then when you, when you're not using the fridge you've got a travel catch on here at the top so you can shut it if you put it on vent first and then you'll notice the door just clips in at the first clip you'll notice the door's not 100% shut that's designed to allow air in and out the fridge once you've cleaned it out it will not make the fridge go smelly and grow mould in there as it's allowing a circulation of air cutlery drawer at the top here you've got two gas burners which are lit there allow them to cool before you put the glass lid down and then on the other side you've got a cold water feed tap only Pump. and once the pump's on you'll be able to pull the water through and then to turn it off once it's seen the temperature you simply press back a few times until you can start scrolling you'll see the heat sign you'll see the spanner sign and then you'll see off once it gets to off just press it and it says switching off and that'll turn the heating panel off and stop the diesel heater from running and there you see that your tap is working on a cold water feed from the main tank which is underneath the bed with a submersible pump in so you can gain access to it if you need to but you can see the levels by just looking at the tank so to make your rib bed up there's a lever here which folds the base of the seat over and out and then using this bar here you'd fold the backrest down and then using the same bar you'd use to operate the parcel shelf slash back of it you can push this down and there you have one bed one double bed made out of the rock and roll bed so to operate your pop top so you've got it up Obviously this is your bed board where you put the mattress on and form the additional double bed at the top. Then obviously you just unstrap that strap when you're using it just to keep the canvas taut. And then when you want to put it down, what you'll need to do is pull the handles on both sides, pull it down and then get hold of the handles pull it down so far and then what you'll want to do is pull the canvas in on the sides and the front to stop it getting nipped between the roof and the metal of the vehicle and then pull it all the way down and then you've got two straps which look like this feed it through the loop here and the loop there Press the button, slide it through, get it as tight as you can, and then what I would do with the additional strap, round the back a few times, and then down through the loop that you've just created to form a bit of a, a tie, and it just is an additional safety in case anything did happen at least you know that the roof is tight and then there's no harm in just looking outside to make sure that you've got no canvas stuck 
hanging out the side of the vehicle before you set off. So round the back twice and then down through the middle and pull it tight. So your double passenger seat has a swivel base on and to loosen the swivel base off you've got two nuts at the front, two nuts at the back. If you lift them up, they've got two pins on and turn them so the pins are now resting on this metal top bit. That'll keep the bolt up on all fours, on all four bolts will be kept up so that the base can then swivel. You will have to put the vehicle into gear and drop the, the handbrake as the handbrake does affect the seat spinning so just if you're obviously on a hill put it in first and if you're pointing down a hill pop it in reverse so opposite gears just so that the vehicle doesn't roll away. You will get a little bit movement on the once you drop the handbrake but then the gears will hold it and then what you need to do is push it this side first so driver's side of the seat first and then turn it round and then you've got an additional two seats to sit in the back and obviously this does need to be spun the right way when driving because you can't see your passenger mirror and make sure that when you it is dry when you are driving that the bolts are securely fastened in case of an accident they need to be fastened but you do have the ability to lift and pull this forward and you've got some storage in here and you'll see you've got a tonai and a brace there and the leisure battery is underneath the driver's seat which is fixed so now in the cab on the doors you've got electric windows electric mirror adjustment and then you go up for your heated mirrors and this locks and unlocks the doors from inside you've got your side lights and your main lights and then you pull out for your rear fogs so this is all your lights and you've got your headlight adjustment here and then obviously this just adjusts the clocks when the lights are on so you can have a brighter or dimmer depending on how you want it. Lever here so this jacks the seat up so it puts a bit of air in the seats and jacks it up so you can get a clear view across the bonnet. Wipers and then your trip computer goes through your screen. You've got your indicators and your park light on here but you've also got your cruise control so you turn it on so you've got off cancel and on and then you would just press set minus set plus so so you'd always get up to speed first and press set minus which will set it and then if you want to accelerate or decelerate you go up or down or if you've cancelled it off with a foot brake you can just press the top one which is res which is resume and it'll resume it to the last speed that you had it set at got a cup holder here 12 volt another cup holder some storage lockable glove box usb for connection to the head unit turns your start stop off hazards obviously this will illuminate if the passenger airbags turned off if you have children in the front seat temperature fan speed Distribution, so where you want it to go to, aircon and recirculation. This turns off your traction control by pressing and holding it. It'll say traction control ASR deactivated, and it'll basically stop your wheels from spinning if you're trying to get out of a muddy site or wet grass. Radio is FM AM and DAB and then you press you can scroll along to find your favourite channels press 1, 2, 3 and 4 to save your favourite channels by just pressing and holding and you'll hear a beep and it'll save it so I've just saved capital there you've got SD 
3.5 milli jack and CD and obviously USB connections. Media obviously would work your CD, USB or AUX input. Phone, find phone, results. You want to search on your phone for VW. Press pair on your phone, it'll ask you if you want to allow to save your contacts, press allow and that'll all download your phone book into here and then you'll be able to use Bluetooth audio through the media. If you want to play songs off your phone, obviously eject, eject the CD, set up, sound screen language, Bluetooth, so you can get rid of all the paired devices, which I'll do now. Delete all, and then you can pair. So should you be struggling to pair, you may have to just delete your phone and then reinstall it. And you've got sound there, so you can change the volume, the balance, the bass, the temp, and the mid bass, all through there, should you want to set your sound system up for the music you listen to. But apart from that, it all works perfectly. Your tyre pressures are on your driver's door. So whatever tyre is fitted, you just look along for the bar, the PSI, and it'll tell you how much to inflate your tyres to.